Hello and welcome to the Animal Crossing Iceberg. My name is Nate and I'm actually really excited to put this video together for you all. I've put about 20 pages of text together to read so get ready for this long and wild ride. This video is based on the iceberg image that I'm going to post right here. So go ahead, feel free to grab a snack and drink before I get started because we've got plenty of things to talk about. I do want to note that this iceberg video will not have any sort of jump scares or creepy audio or soundtracks that'll unsettle you because I'm personally not a fan of that so just know you can completely relax. I will do everything in my power to not scare you too much. So let's get started with layer one. Wisp. Wisp is a ghost you can see at a certain hour of the night. The Wisp from before Animal Crossing New Horizons is a lot more mysterious, only appearing between 12 to 4 a.m. You're given the task to hunt five spirits with the net, and upon returning the five spirits to Wisp, he'll offer you one of three options. He can remove all the weeds from your town, he will give that player a randomly selected item that isn't in their catalog yet, or he will recolor the roof of the player's house. The Money Rock. A money rock, also known as a bell rock, is a term given to a specific rock that generates bells when struck with a shovel or an axe. Once a day, a random existing rock in the town becomes a money rock, and similar to the glowing spot in the GameCube versions of the games, serves as a quick daily method of obtaining bells. The money rocks are not distinguishable from regular rocks and are not identified until the rock has been struck at the point where it becomes bright red and gradually fades to normal in the N64 and GameCube games, or it shakes in the later games. Each strike of the rock within this timer will generate a bell bag, the value of which rises with each successive hit or a series of hits depending on the game. Blanca Blanca is a white cat with no face. In all games prior to New Leaf, she wears a blossom shirt. Her face can be drawn on by the player, and is the source for a lot of weird looking faces you see. You can use the toilet. This one is pretty self explanatory. Normally in older Animal Crossing games, you can sit on the toilet, and when you get up, the toilet will flush. However, in New Horizons, if you eat food and sit on the toilet, the food counter will drop down effectively using the toilet. KK Bubblegum. KK Bubblegum is a now incredibly iconic song within the Animal Crossing series, composed by Atsuko Asahi. The Japanese name for the song is called Keke Idol, which I assume is referring to Japanese idol culture or J-pop. The American name Bubblegum is commonly used to refer to music that is overtly positive. Here's a fun fact. Vocaloid producer and composer The Oster Project published on her Nico Nico Doga an extended arrangement of a cover of Bubblegum KK with lyrics sung by Hatsune Miku and Kagame Rin. The video contains a reference to the album cover with the Animal Crossing characters Francine and Chrissy against the pink background with silhouettes of KK Slider's head. One up sound effects. While there is a one up mushroom that also plays the sound in the game, I'm certain this entry is referring to the money rock. When you hit the money rock a certain amount of times, each consecutive hit plays the one up sound from the Super Mario Bros. series, which might be a reference in and of itself, as the money doubles just as the score does until you double the number enough times to start hearing the one up and getting the bonus lives. Platoon References When the player catches a squid in Animal Crossing New Horizons, a quote referencing Splatoon might be shown, including, I caught a squid, it's off the hook, or, I caught a squid, I had an inkling I might. In addition, Blathers references Splatoon while giving a short speech about the, I, I'm gonna butcher this, so I'm just gonna put it up on screen, and he says, the blank is famous for being the link between fish and land animals long before dinosaurs. It seems to have strong fins capable of pulling it around areas where the water was shallow. When most creatures lived in the sea, they dreamed of land. If not for them, we mightn't be here today. Imagine if we'd not left the oceans. How might fashion and music be different in an aquatic world? How would we resolve differences? Perhaps some sort of ink squirting contest of champions? Photo Op Locations I couldn't really find much on this except for an article detailing some real life photo ops in anticipation of Animal Crossing New Horizons. There were photo ops and prizes that were given out to people who went to this Nintendo Live 2019 booth. I believe one of the bigger ones was at PAX. Rossetti's House. 
This entry refers to the Reset Surveillance Center, the HQ where Mr. Rossetti and his brother Don Rossetti live and operate out of. In Debutsu Nomori E+, the center is hidden under a random breakable rock. In City Folk, the center is located at the eastern end of the city, behind two traffic cones in front of the tunnel leading out of the city proper. In New Leaf, on the other hand, the facility is available as a public works project at the cost of 368,000 bells. E+, offers no reward. City Folk gives you the silver shovel. New Leaf gives you Don's picture after five visits, and Mr. Rossetti his picture after seven. Pier exclusive fish. It's the only place on the island or town where the blue marlin, giant traveli, mahi mahi, and the tuna can appear and be caught by the player. Animal forest. I said this earlier, but Debochu no Mori is the game's name in Japanese. When Debochu no Mori is translated to English, it translates to animal forest. Population growing. The original Animal Crossing game cover that is the basis for the main Animal Crossing logo uses a design that looks like a sign that welcomes you when entering the borderline of a new city. Most signs have a fun fact or quirky quote. The Animal Crossing sign says, Population growing, as a sign that new people will be coming to live there. Serena Serena is a goddess dog in Animal Crossing City Folk who appears in the town's fountain. She is the source of the silver axe and golden axe. In Animal Crossing City Folk, Serena appears in the town's fountain if the player throws an axe into it. This is done by swinging the Wii Remote while holding the axe. Serena will ask the player a series of questions including, but not limited to, which axe did you throw? How do I look today? Did I seem goddessy? And do you really not like me? Or ask him to choose her right or left hand. After the player answers the question, Serena will either give them a silver, a golden axe, return the standard axe, or give nothing, keeping the standard axe. The the answer the player gives for questions have no effect on the outcome. This interaction is a reference to the fable The Honest Woodcutter, where a man drops his axe into a river and a god appears, asking him if he dropped a golden or silver axe. The man answers neither and is impressed by his honesty. The god gives him all three axes. Bug Fight Club Bug Fight Club refers to the beetles in the museum, forming a circle. The beetles found fighting on the tree will actually vary. Although this feature comes as a delightful surprise to most Animal Crossing players, the inclusion and celebration of beetles should not. Japan specifically has a long history and fascination of beetles, given Japan's large beetle population and the fact that beetles' horns resemble samurai helmets. Chrissy and Francine are sisters. According to Animal Crossing Pocket Camp and the official Japanese website for Animal Crossing City Folk, Chrissy is the younger sister of Francine. For one, both of them are on the cover of KK Slider's Bubblegum KK. Chrissy also has a photo of Francine inside of her house. In Animal Crossing Happy Home Designer, Chrissy unlocks several items that are related to Francine, such as Francine's pick and Bubblegum KK. She also unlocks the Bunny C and Bunny P balloon, which represent Francine and Chrissy respectively, as they are shaped like rabbit heads and match their respective fur colors. The Roost The Roost is a cafe that first appeared in Animal Crossing Wild World. In Wild World, City Folk, and New Horizons, it is located in the museum, while in New Leaf, it is a separate building available as a public works project. The Roost will be added to Animal Crossing New Horizons in the 2.0 free update. Money Trees Money trees are a type of tree in the Animal Crossing series. In Animal Crossing and Animal Crossing New Horizons, money trees can be planted with the regular or golden shovel by burying money in the daily, shining soil. In Animal Crossing Wild World, City Folk, and New Leaf, the player can grow them by burying a bag of money using a golden shovel. If the tree successfully grows and blooms, there will be three bags of the amount of bells the player planted. However, more than 90,000 bells can never be obtained. Burying more than 30,000 bells will still result in the tree producing three 30,000 bell bags. Money trees will bloom and thus produce money, only one. Octopus Villagers there are only four octopus villagers, making them the rarest villager type. Octopus as a villager species are especially unique in multiple ways. They are the only invertebrate of species of villagers, they are the only fully aquatic species of villagers, and they are the only villagers with more than two legs. Amiibo Cards and Figures Amiibo are a set of character figurines and cards that interact with the NFC readers on the Nintendo Switch's Joy-Cons, Wii U gamepad, and the touchscreen of the Nintendo New 3DS. In the New Leaf update, Welcome Amiibo, released on November 2nd, 2016, Amiibo support for both cards and figurines became available for the title. Additions include a variety of villagers who had not yet appeared in New Leaf, as well as new villagers from other Nintendo titles. These villagers will initially stay in the RV, but may move into the player's town as well. Happy Home Designer. 
a game for the Nintendo 3DS released in 2015. It is a spin-off entry in the Animal Crossing series where the player designs homes for clients. It is also the first entry to be compatible with Amiibo, utilizing a series of Animal Crossing Amiibo cards that were released alongside the game. The home design gameplay from Happy Home Designer will return in the Happy Home Paradise DLC for Animal Crossing New Horizon. Pocket Camp Animal Crossing Pocket Camp is a free-to-start mobile application in the Animal Crossing series that was released on the Android and iOS operating systems on October 25th, 2017 in Australia and in 40 other territories on November 22nd, 2017. Games visuals, graphics, AI, and sound effects are blatantly derived from Animal Crossing New Leaf and the dropped item icons and models come from Animal Crossing City Folk. I personally was not the biggest fan of this game. I tested it, but I found that the gameplay is a bit shallow, so I think a lot of fans will agree with me that it is a bit shallow. And then the use of leaf tickets causes a lot of controversy because you require a lot of leaf tickets and a lot of luck to get the items that are cool and yet they continue to roll out cool looking content for pocket camp and not for new horizons mario kart dlc animal crossing cross mario kart 8 is a dlc pack for mario kart 8 on the wii u released on april 23rd 2015 it contains content based on the animal crossing series the content pack includes the introduction of Isabelle and the human player as playable racers. It also contains two cups, one of which is based on Animal Crossing, the Crossing Cup, and two new vehicles based on Animal Crossing, the City Tripper and the Streetle. The Crossing Cup's signature track, named Animal Crossing, has players racing through an Animal Crossing village whose season changes each time the course is played. Familiar faces and buildings can be found on the sidelines, and Rossetti even makes an appearance popping out of the ground similar to Monty Mole. The track features newly recorded music more suited to the faster-paced Mario Kart atmosphere. Froggy Chair The Froggy Chair is a furniture item in Animal Crossing and has been a long-standing fan-favorite item that was initially not in Animal Crossing New Horizons, but people screamed when seeing it in the background on the Animal Crossing Direct for version 2.0. Frillard Frillard, also known as Master Frillard, is a special character in Animal Crossing City Folk. He makes his appearance in the marquee, taking Dr. Shrug's place on rare occasions. He is deep voiced like cranky villagers. In Animal Crossing City Folk, villagers of the city describe Frillard as a great entertainer with his humorous joke. They also mention that Dr. Shrunk is Frillard's student. 333 there are multiple broadcasts that play on TV items depending on the time of day, usually quirky or a bit mundane like weather forecasts that actually change depending on the weather. That's a really cool one to me. But a unique broadcast takes place at 3.33 a.m. TV will have static, cut off, and show a great alien who speaks in gibberish, showing his UFO. The broadcast ends with static. It's pretty creepy for an otherwise wholesome game. The Original Mayor some of the newer players may not have any idea who this character is. Tortimer is an elderly tortoise who is the mayor of the town the player moves into in the Animal Crossing series prior to Animal Crossing New Leaf, where that role is given to the player. He has appeared in every installment of the Animal Crossing series with the exceptions of Debochi Numori. His name is a portmanteau of tortoise and the given name Mortimer. In games before Animal Crossing New Leaf, Tortimer appears outside celebrating during town events and will give the player holiday specific items. In Animal Crossing New Leaf, Tortimer is retired from the role of the mayor and now lives on Tortimer Island where he works as a tour guide. Lucky Items Lucky items are items that when placed in the player's house, give the player a 777 or 7777 point bonus in their Happy Home Academy score. Duplicate items do not award multiple bonuses. Feng Shui Feng Shui is a game mechanic in which the player's Happy Home Academy score and luck regarding items and money are increased based on the arrangement of furniture in the player's house. Feng Shui in the Animal Crossing series is based on a practice originating from ancient China in which housewares are arranged in a certain way to increase the flow of positive energy throughout a house. Every furniture item has a color assigned to it. Colors that affect Feng Shui are red, green, and yellow. Each side of the player's house, west, east, and south, has a corresponding color and feng shui increases if items of that color are placed there. Red corresponds to the east end of a room, green corresponds to the south, and yellow corresponds to the west. In the original Animal Crossing only, there are two more feng shui colors, orange and special. Orange corresponds to the north end of a room and special items can be placed anywhere in a room and still increase feng shui regardless of where they're at. The more items of the correct color are placed in the player's house, the stronger the luck effects of feng shui are. 
In Animal Crossing New Horizons, there are three types of feng shui, red, green, and yellow. The Happy Home Academy awards a 500 point bonus for each wall with at least one matching color. Unlike previous games, feng shui has no effect on the player's luck. Customization Resource Tool Durability This one is a bit self-explanatory. It's more like a pro tip. Tools have a limited usage and eventually break in Animal Crossing New Horizons, which causes you to have to craft or buy a new one. You eventually unlock the upgraded tools to buy at the Nook store. They're a bit more stylized and you can customize them. So let's say you use the shovel 20 times. You can open the DIY options to reset the use counter and effectively get a new shovel for the cost of customization kits instead of having to buy one or craft one. Ica Village Ica Village is a dream town in Animal Crossing New Leaf created by this user. I won't say her name because I kind of don't know how to say it. The town is a creepypasta styled story told in a format where each of the four player houses is a different chapter of the story. I'll quickly sum up the story. A doll kills the main character, then kills the family. That's incredibly surface level, but the layout of the house keeps the tension high and unsettling. There are other theories that are a bit too long to explain and they get a bit over the top, so I'll just give you a content warning before you look into theories. It can be a bit triggering. Isabel. Isabel. As soon as I read this entry, I immediately understood it. Her design seems to be based on the bell bag in Animal Crossing, including the red bow tied around the bag. And she has a bell that jingles when she walks. I think it's cute. Isabel drinks alcohol. There are two different things that relate to Isabel drinking alcohol. In an Animal Crossing Direct, Isabel was shown to be drinking something. It has a particular shade of brown with a smaller amount of ice that reminds me of something that's pretty not rated E for everyone. It looks a bit like a whiskey or, you know, some type of liquor. The other time is from an item in Animal Crossing Pocket Camp called Vacation Juice. It looks quite a bit like a tropical mixed drink. The community started sharing a short video of Isabel moving around and dancing with paper fans in hand with the caption, Isabel drinks vacation juice, but no conversation or animation of her drinking it exists. NES games. NES games are furniture items that appear in Devotion to Mori, Animal Crossing, and Devotion to Mori E+. They contain emulated Nintendo Entertainment System or Family Computer Disk System games. There are 19 games in total, though the specific games and their availability differ between Animal Crossing series games. In the GameCube games, the emulations can be temporarily transferred to a Game Boy Advance for portable play until the GBA is turned off. Progress can be transferred back to the Nintendo GameCube and saved, though some games disallow saving at all. The Shrunk Funk Shuffle In Animal Crossing New Leaf, Dr. Shrunk appears outside the player's house after TNT Mart is built. He asks for six signatures to approve the construction of Club LOL on Main Street. Once the club is built, Dr. Strunk appears in it from 12 p.m. to 8 p.m. He states that he is a retired comedian, but if the player brings him a food item such as fruit, he gets on stage and performs a joke, teaching the player the corresponding emotion used in the joke. Once the player learns all but one emotion, Strunk teaches them the Strunk Funk Shuffle, which is the dance he does after each performance. He also gives the player a replica of his jacket. Strunk also appears in Club LOL as a host when KK Slider or DJ KK are performing. Animal Crossing Anime Getchoban Dobotsu no Mori is a 2006 animated film based on the Animal Crossing series. The movie takes place in the Animal Crossing Wild World styled world. I personally really like the movie and I think every fan owes it to themselves to watch this movie at least once because I find it to be one of those comfy movies that you can just watch and just get that warm fuzzy feeling. The film was directed by Joji Shimura with production by OLM Inc and was released in theaters on December 16, 2006, where it earned an estimated total of 1.7 billion yen, which is about $16 million at the box office as of 2007. Toy Hammers the toy hammer is a tool in Animal Crossing New Leaf. The hammer itself is colored red and has a yellow handle. The toy hammer is used primarily for specific tours on Tortimer Island, including the hammer tours, where players get to hit a machine that resembles Cornimer. It can also be used to hit other players and villagers, although doing so can provoke the villagers to be angry or sad. Animal Forest E+. The Botsin de Mori E Plus is an expanded version of Animal Crossing released on the Nintendo GameCube exclusively in Japan in 2003. In addition to the content from Animal Crossing, the game features new villagers, items, gameplay elements, and expanded e-reader functionality. Due to Nintendo of America's successful localization of Animal Crossing, Nintendo retranslated the game back into Japanese, added additional new content, and released it as the Botsin de Mori E Plus on June 27, 2003, nine months after the North American release of Animal Crossing. The game retailed for $6,000 
21,800 yen and sold 91,658 copies in its first week of sale. It went on to sell approximately 640,000 copies as of October 2004. This version of the game was never localized for North America or Europe, possibly due to the e-reader's limited success outside of Japan or the development and upcoming release of Animal Crossing Wild World. Despite this, many features introduced on E+ return to later entries of the Animal Crossing series. E-reader cards. This is one's a bit of an obscure thing. E-reader cards were a Game Boy Advance peripheral that you would scan cards to receive additional content. And in 2002 and in 2003, a collection of Animal Crossing e-reader cards packaged into the name Animal Crossing E in North America, e-reader was a big precursor to what eventually would become Amiibo cards. Each pack contained a random assortment of five cards sold at $2.99. In order to use the cards, the player must scan the cards at the appropriate in-game location which varies according to card type. The Debochu no Mori Plus cards can only be scanned on the Game Boy Advance by itself, as the original Japanese e-reader cannot connect to the Nintendo GameCube. There are six different types of cards. There are character cards, sibling cards, design cards, town tune cards, game cards, classic game cards. There are two classic game cards, Ice Climber and Mario Bros. Scanning them gives the player a letter from Tom Nook containing the Ice Climber and Mario Bros. items respectively. And this is the end of Layer 2. Layer 3. Who sends the balloon presents? I like this entry, because there isn't that much clarity in this entry. There are not a lot of theories about this. Some seem to think it might be Red who sends the balloons, as he is the one person you can buy balloons from. A YouTuber by the name of Koromora made a theory video called Who Sends Us Balloon Presents? And while it doesn't answer a lot, I think it's cute. She suggests that your dad move to a nearby island and sends balloons just for you every hour. It's a nice headcanon, that's for sure. I'll also leave a link in the description of the video. Animal Crossing Plaza Wii U Animal Crossing Plaza is a discontinued social application for the Wii U that was available for free from the Nintendo eShop. The plaza is filled with animals from the Animal Crossing series, including villagers and special characters. Periodically, characters will give comments or speak about themselves. The plaza also contains a bulletin board, which links the player to the Mii vs. Animal Crossing news community. By selecting a villager or special character, the player can view their profile, which includes basic information about the animal, as well as links to post about and view posts about the specific character they're selecting. Additionally, the player may mark the animal as their favorite, which will ensure that the animal will always be present in the plaza. When this game first came out, the community speculated that this was a hint that a full-fledged Animal Crossing game would be coming to Wii U, which sadly never happened. 64DD I actually didn't know the extent of this particular piece of trivia, and I thought it was a really cool story. The concept of Animal Crossing was actually intended to be released on the Nintendo 64DD. The 64DD is a magnetic floppy disk drive peripheral for the Nintendo 64. The 64DD allows the Nintendo 64 to use proprietary 64 megabyte magnetic disk for expanded and rewritable data storage, a real-time clock for persistent game world design, and a standard font and audio library for further storage efficiency. Its games and hardware accessories let the user create movies, characters, and animations to use within various other games and shared online. The system could connect to the internet through a dedicated online service, Randnet, for e-commerce, online gaming, and media sharing. The 64DD was originally intended to be launched in 1997, one year after the release of the N64 in 96. It was delayed many times and finally released in 1999, close to the end of the life of the Nintendo 64. So with the delays of the 64DD, the N64 version of Animal Crossing, Debutsu Numori, had compromised the features of the DD, such as replacing the internal clock with a clock battery, much like the batteries from the Pokemon Gold and Silver game. The controller pack would be used to save the town's data, as there weren't peripheral memory cards. Since the N64 game was released so late in Japan, the original Animal Crossing was pushed back in the US to 2001, due to the GameCube coming out so soon as well. Secret KK Songs in each of the Animal Crossing series games, KK Slider has a handful of secret songs that can only be obtained by request. He would not play them randomly, only if they are given to him by name specifically. They are still part of his set list, meaning that obtaining them is necessary for completing the catalog. The intended way to obtain these songs is to hear about them from other villagers, hear them in certain villagers' homes, or on the radio. Villagers will also occasionally tell the player about them. Secret songs generally follow a pattern of having one remix song in each group of three. Forest Life, Spring Blossoms, KK Island, Animal City, and Hazard. 01 are all remixes of themes from prior games. Wisps Masters 
This is another one of those cool Animal Crossing anomalies, just like who sends the balloon presents. When you meet Wisp in the GameCube version, he asks for your help with retrieving some spirits across the town. Wisp says that if he doesn't get the spirits back, someone will punish him horribly. On a post on Animal Crossing Community, there's a topic asking about Wisp's masters, and various users say that Wisp masters have different names, and here are some of them. The Giant Lens, The Ghost League, The Big Smelly, The Controller, The Stumbler, Lord Smarty Pants. I think it's just one of those things that it throws one of these different types of names in a random generator and then changes it, but I still think it's a cool thing. I always wonder what the Wisp Masters actually look like or who they are. Getting kicked out of nooks. Getting kicked out of Nooks is something that happens when you're in the store and the clock hits the hour that it closes. Tom Nook or Timmy and Tommy will tell you, as much as we do enjoy your company, it's past for closing hours for today and we'll promptly send you outside. Another little piece of trivia is that the last 10 minutes of the store being open, the music at the store changes. Mr. Rossetti Controversy the Mr. Rossetti controversy is something that I remember happening and hearing about at a certain point in the Animal Crossing series. In an Iwata asked interview session, the directors of Animal Crossing New Leaf admitted that Mr. Rossetti was disturbing to some children and sometimes made young girls who were playing cry. Thus, they made the decision to lay off Mr. Rossetti and have the option to include him back at the player's discretion. Before this, there were disclaimers in the City Folk version of Animal Crossing stating, Information for parents, Mr. Rossetti. It is important that players save before switching off the Wii console in order to retain data after each play session. If players switch off without saving, the character Mr. Rossetti may appear upon restarting. Mr. Rossetti's purpose is to teach players the importance of saving. However, parents should be aware that his personality and tone of his voice, while intentionally hilarious, are authoritative and may be disturbing to young children. Haunted Paintings I knew some of these, but I never realized how spooky this entry actually can be if you see these without knowing the context behind them. So Red Cell's artwork pieces to you, but they come at the hefty risk of the artwork potentially being fake. In the past, fake artwork pieces would just be small details missing from the artwork. Now there are small details that go beyond the artwork. The graceful painting has a humanoid shadow on the back. The scary painting smiles at night. Wistful painting's eyes close at night. The ancient statue's eyes glow and levitate at night, and the information statue glows in the middle of the night. Pretty weird. These ones always freak me out now. Tom Nook's Pajamas In Animal Forest E+, the player can wake up Tom Nook after hours by banging on the doors three times with the shovel. He will be in his pajamas and allow you to shop, but he will move much, much slower. Not only this, anything the player sells to him will be lowered from its base price by 30%. Similarly, Prices of items in the shop will be inflated by 17% and the player is only allowed to either sell or buy what is on display. The catalog and other options will not be available either. Pattern Stumps Special stump patterns are a feature that occurs in Animal Crossing New Leaf. When a tree is cut down with an axe, the resulting stump has a chance of having a special stump pattern appearing on it instead of the white circular pattern. There are things such as the Triforce, there are hearts, a couple other things. I'll put them on screen here so you can see all of them. I remember seeing these at, on people's dream towns to make them extra cute. So I can't imagine how long it took to get the specific patterns like a heart or a triforce to go with your town's theme. Lottie wears too much makeup. While I don't agree with the title of this entry, there is a visual difference between Lottie with and without makeup. Without makeup, she has these little black dots as eyes, but with makeup, her eyes are white with a black outline and eyelashes. I think it's a nice little detail in the Animal Crossing world to show a character without makeup, as we do know a few characters who do wear makeup. Makes me wonder what they look like without it. Totaka's Song Totaka's song is a simple 19 note and 8 bar melody that Nintendo sound designer Kazumi Totaka is known for inserting in most of the titles he has worked on. The song is very simple and is often hidden several minutes into a rarely heard song in the game, requiring a player to find a place where the song plays and wait. Earlier in this video I mentioned there being secret KK songs and the Totaka song is a secret song within the first Animal Crossing series. It's called KK Song, which is a multi-layered reference when you remember that KK Slider's name is a reference in and of itself. KK Slider is based on the Animal Crossing sound designer I named previously, Kazumi Totaka. KK is a caricature of Totaka himself, while his Japanese name Totakeke is taken from Totaka's nickname, it is derived 
derived from the Japanese tradition that last names be written first, i.e. Totaka Kazumi. This can be shortened to Totaka Ke, which sounds like Totakeke when introducing himself to the player in the original Animal Crossing. KK Slider states his true name is literally Totakeke, suggesting that KK Slider is a stage name. Detailed Knees Detailed knees refers to the posts and images that went around when Animal Crossing New Horizons first showed off in trailers. Fans would post a screen cap of a player character wearing shorts and be impressed by the details of their kneecaps. Memes were soon after made saying in Animal Crossing New Horizons, the player has more detailed kneecaps, allowing Tom Nook to easily bash them in after you fail to pay your debt. And this is the end of Layer 3. Layer 4 Bao and Meow. This one is a weird but cool piece of trivia. Baolingual, as the North American version is spelled, is a computer-based dog-to-human language translation device developed by Japanese toy company Takara and first sold in Japan in 2002. Versions for South Korea and the United States were launched in 2003. The device was named by Time Magazine as one of the best inventions of 2002. The inventors of Baolingual, Kita Soto, Dr. Matsumi Suzuki, and Dr. Norio Kogori were awarded the 2002 IG Nobel Prize for promoting peace and harmony between the species. The device is presented as a translator but has been called an emotion analyzer. It is said to categorize dog barks into one of six standardized emotional categories. In 2003, Takara launched a follow-up product for cats called the Meow Lingual. Now, where does this all come together? Well, <laughs> in Animal Crossing E+, the Japanese version I had mentioned prior, there are two villagers that are exclusive to these called Bao, who is a lazy dog villager, and Meow, a peppy cat. Like I had mentioned, there are two unique villagers that can only enter and move in if the player had the e-reader cards. When you look at what the characters actually are, you realize that their designs are both based on the Bao lingual and the Meow lingual. And that's about it. But I think it is a really cool homage to something as unique as the Bao lingual and Meow lingual. Brutus. After being released, fans of the original Animal Crossing for GameCube began spreading stories of an evil villager named Brutus, who would move into the player's village if the player was away from the village for too long. Brutus, also known as Brutus with an IS, was allegedly a purple or black dog with a black shirt and glowing red eyes. Upon moving in, Brutus would do many unusual things, like speak in binary and crash the game when the player enters his house. Only one screenshot of Brutus is known, and it is known to be a fake. Thus, the Brutus rumor is unlikely to be true. Farley This entry is a lot like Serena. Farley is a maid that lives in the fountain. He only appears to reward the player with a golden axe for having a perfect town. It is often speculated that Farley is the voice that speaks to you when you interact with the fountain in the original Animal Crossing game. It is not known what Farley actually is, but it seems to have a gnome or troll type appearance. Farley has only ever appeared in the American version of Animal Crossing. His voice sounds a lot like male animalese but pitched down. Reference to the Da Vinci Code I love these random, weird references. I previously mentioned the haunted and forged paintings from Red. The forged version of the academic painting has a coffee stain on the front and a key taped to the back. In the story of the Da Vinci Code, there's geocaching, with things hidden like keys to lockboxes. So it only raises the question, where does this one lead to? DSi Clock and DSi Calculator the Nintendo DSi had a digital-only store called the DSi Shop. The Animal Crossing Clock was a piece of software that cost $1.99. It played Animal Crossing sounds and was generally poorly received by the public and by critics alike. The Animal Crossing Calculator was another piece of software that also costed $1.99. It had three different settings, normal for a basic calculator, a unit converter which converted the measurements of length, area, weight, speed, volume, temperature, time, and age, and there was also an age calculator for human, hamster, cat, parakeet, small dog, rabbit, large dog, and horse. Hidden Bug on the Museum Wall this is a simple entry. There's a hidden bug in Animal Crossing New Horizons Museum. Stand near the stairs, use the camera app, move the interface to the top left of the screen to see it. Depending on the time of day, you might see a moth, a centipede, or a group of ants. The Black Void. 
I technically have some experience with the Black Void. There's a video on YouTube called Entering the Void in Animal Crossing by Crossing Channel that was posted in 2019. It shows the player going out of bounds and exploring the boundaries of the game. He walks up the cliff, moves to the train tracks, and runs into the tunnel. His player character disappears, the screen blacks out for about 15 seconds, then the character reappears eventually and he goes on to explore more out of bounds parts of Animal Crossing. My own experience is that it's uh, actually replay code where you hold Z button. It allows your character to float up and thus you can go to places you normally couldn't like the back part of the river towards the top of the train station. Yeah, so it's it's just showing off this action replay code that you can use and it, it is cool to see the sides of the towns that don't get used and what the characters even scripted to clip through or not clip through. Animal Island. Animal Island is a resort that appears in Animal Crossing and devotes to Mori E+. It is a small island inhabited by a sole inhabitant known as the Islander, and also contains an empty bungalow which can be freely used by the player. Upon the first visit, the player will be asked by Captain to name the island. Upon returning to the mainland, the island can be sent to a Game Boy Advance where the player may continue to interact with the Islander or trade islands with another town's player. There are some exclusive items you can get at the island including two NES games, Baseball and Warrior's Woods. Each island has a random Islander villager who is exclusive to the island. One of the most prolific characters in Animal Crossing was actually originally an Islander, Anka. Curing Wallpaper there's a Wendell slash Sahara exclusive wallpaper called Ringside Seating that shows a crowd at a boxing event. There's a furniture item in the boxing set called the Judge's Bell. When you interact with the bell to ring it while the ringside seating is in use, you'll hear the sound of an audience cheering and cameras flashing, just like a boxing match. Timmy and Tommy are adopted. Timmy and Tommy are twin raccoons in Animal Crossing who are apprentices of Tom Nook. In Wild World, Tom Nook explains to the player that Timmy and Tommy are not related to him by blood and thinks of them as his pupils and himself as the mentor, stating that he wants to teach others good economic principles in order to help them from suffering the same pitfalls he did when he was growing up. Their last names are said to be Nook. Certain jock or lazy villagers will tell of a rumor that Tom Nook found them in the streets and raised them by himself. 79 Celsius is the perfect coffee temperature. We've briefly talked about Brewster earlier in this video. This goes into something specific about Brewster. When you order coffee from Brewster, if you say that you'll wait for it to cool down, he'll insist you want the best flavor, you will drink this at exactly 176.36 degrees, piping hot's the only way. And when you do look up coffee, most resources cite that this exact temperature is actually correct for the perfect coffee. So it does kind of coincide with real life if you want to know how to make really good coffee. Identity of the Wanted Fugitives I actually initially researched the name of this entry. I looked at other iceberg related videos and could not really find that much information about this. I did eventually find info that is incredibly vague but still interesting. In Debochin no Mori, Debochin no Mori E Plus, and Animal Crossing for GameCube, two unnamed fugitives can be seen on a poster labeled Wanted at the back of the police station. Though their names are illegibly written, the fugitive on the left appears to resemble a large male goat, while the fugitive on the right appears to be a female bear or rabbit with long hair and a human like face. In Animal Crossing and Debochin Bochin Mori E+, a third wanted poster also appears outside of the police station who resembles a fox or tanuki. Nothing is known about these criminals as neither Booker or Copper will acknowledge them, except they are on the run from the law after committing an unknown crime. Special Phone Cases I thought this would be a higher up entry, but here we go. I'm 90% sure that this is about customized Nook phone cases you can make. Mine's based on a Game Boy. If I'm wrong, please let me know so I can at least give people accurate information, but I'm not sure. And this is the end of layer four. Layer five. Identity of the unnamed police officer. This entry is a lot like the identity of the wanted fugitives in that I struggled to find info on this until I looked up the next entry on this iceberg. It's again an obscure background detail in the GameCube version of Animal Crossing and E+. An unnamed dog dressed as a police officer appears on a promotional poster within the police station. The officer appears on this poster giving a salute with the tagline, I want you, written above them. The poster itself appears to be a parody of Uncle Sam, a mascot of the United States who appears on the I want you posters to promote enlistment in the American military. And then I'll also just tell you who the police officers in Animal Crossing are since they are in New Horizons. In every Animal Crossing game except for New Horizons, 
reasons, there were a pair of dogs that acted as the law enforcement for the town. Their names are Copper and Booker. Copper is outgoing and hardworking. He loves to see early risers in the morning and is athletic, hosting the morning aerobics, which is now being added to New Horizons without him. Booker is timid, often sounding unsure, saying uh and um. Not to mention he's a little thick, a complete contrast to Copper. The Singing Bug Boy This one is straight up odd. The Singing Bug Boy is an unseen character in Animal Crossing that sometimes comes up on letters shown by snooty villagers. In said letters, the Bug Boy writes a random tip for catching bugs in the form of a song before ending the letter out of nowhere with BUGS. Such as this one that says, Listen for his voice, then search both high and low. Creep with care beneath the gently swaying bow. A swift net wins the show from The Singing Bug Boy. I don't get it. Tiny Tommy Hicks We can't talk about this entry without a little bit of a backstory. Let's talk about a town called Boondocks. Boondocks is an unseen town located to the north of the player's town in Animal Crossing Wild World. The name Boondocks comes from the word Boondocks, which means an uncivilized or poor area. Pally or Phyllis were first informed the player of the town when they first asked to make a donation. Both pelicans cry when telling a player of Boondocks. According to them, Boondocksians just eat grilled cheese, but since there's no cheese or bread, they're forced to eat fried dirt without ketchup. However, this may just be an exaggeration, as one of the letters sent to the player claims that Boondocksians usually eat day-old croissants. After a certain amount of bells is donated, one of the pelicans will tell the player that the Boondocksians are making a well for mud baths. Also, one small Boondocksian named Tiny Tommy Hicks will finally be able to have a proper fifth birthday with frothy mud drinks after some more bells have been donated. At certain donation landmarks, the Boondocksians will send a player a letter informing them how their donations are being used to better Boondocks. Also enclosed in certain letters will be a feather. Donating bells to Boondocks is the only way of obtaining these feathers, and they cannot be bought from Tom Nook's catalog. Tiny Tommy Hicks is a resident of Boondocks that Pally or Felix will tell a player about when he or she donates a certain amount of bells to Boondocks in Wild World. He seems to be a reference to Tiny Tim Cratchit, a character from the Charles Dickens novel A Christmas Carol. In the novel, Tiny Tim is a small crippled boy around the age of five. He and his family live in poverty and can barely make ends meet. Boondocks will eventually change its name to Boondopolis after the player donates a total of 3 million to 200,000 bells, becoming a booming metropolis from the player's donations. After this, the players can still continue to donate in order to receive the final feather, the rainbow feather. Despite being a thriving city, the Boondocksians still like to eat mud. Whether Boondocks actually exists is never actually determined. A cranky villager may claim that Tortimer walked past and muttered, I'm having steak tonight, or that Tortimer's installing a plasma TV at his house after the villager made the donation. The villagers are highly skeptical, asserting that a coincidence? I think not. Also, a letter from Boondocks may say, my turtle is better, in the sense that the town owns a turtle. Tortimer is a tortoise, which is similar to a turtle. It could be possible that Tortimer is using the money donated himself. Source of the Coffee Beans we love Brewster in this house. He's a bit timid, but opens up and speaks a bit more as you visit it more often. In Animal Crossing City Folk, he gives us some background on his brewing process, saying, I roast my own blends here. You won't see any of that corporate sludge in my cafe. That's a promise. I tried to find any information beyond that, but couldn't find more besides Brewster trying to improve his coffee blend in Pocket Camp. Identity of the Phone Clerk the phone clerk is a character only found in Animal Crossing Wild World that works at the service center. They speak in Bebe Bees and their typical appearance is unknown. The phone clerk can help the player with things such as setting the time and choosing whether characters will speak in Bebe Ease, Animal Ease, or Silence entirely. The player can talk to the phone clerk by selecting the yellow rotary phone on the character select screen or by going to a player's attic and picking up the phone there instead. It is possible that the phone clerk is human due to the humans and snowmen being the only species that speak Bebe Ease no matter what language setting is chosen. However, animals have also been chosen to speak Bebe Ease while muttering, even if Animal Ease is the language chosen. Nindori Nindori is similar to the early entry about Bao and Meow. Nindori is an E-plus exclusive character. He can only move into a town if you have his e-reader card. His name is likely a reference to how his e-reader card is exclusive to the Japanese Nintendo gaming magazine known as Nintendo Dream, the Japanese equivalent of the now defunct Nintendo Power magazine. The title of Nintendo Dream was often shortened to Nindori. His name might also be a portmanteau of Nintendo and Tori, the Japanese word for bird. Due to a phenomenon in Japanese grammar known as Rendaku, Tori may be pronounced in compound words as Dori. Gyroid Face Glitch 
The driver face is a glitch exclusive to the GameCube version of Animal Crossing. The glitch requires a specific type of setup, but I can see why it can happen on accident and freak a player out. If the player visits another town and resets the game, the next time their save is loaded, the texture for their face is that of a gyroid. This glitch ends the next time the player saves the game. Additionally, when resetting in another town, all items and bells in the player's pockets disappear. This reminds me a bit of Mr. Resetti. The fact that the game punishes you for resetting, but realistically, I'm sure the game is programmed specifically to autosave the fact that you did reset versus actually turn off the console. Red is Cursed Red is Cursed refers to a video by YouTube user Swankybox made to propose a theory that with Red's new way of operating his business, that being it changed from a tent to a boat, Swankybox mentions that the fake art tends to have something more than it just looks bad. But some of these art pieces have a bit more of a mind of their own. We the players don't know if Red manufactures these items at his store or gets them from a supplier, but with the different business location being a boat, his items have taken a creepier, spookier turn. Swankybox says that these paintings remind him of something you'd find and see in a pirate's treasure. The theory is pretty humorous to me that what if you picked up a real cursed painting and as a way to torture him forever all the counterfeits share an element of the curse i think it's fun and a good way to explain this type of thing so i'll also leave a link to swanky box's video in the description alien uprising the Alien Uprising is an entry that refers to a theory video, again by the YouTube user Swankybox. The theory plays into the 3.33 AM entry in the iceberg. Swankybox talks about the UFO furniture item, obtained as a DIY from Celeste. The UFO plays the same music heard on the 3.30 AM broadcast. He goes on to say that the UFO on the TV broadcast and the UFO furniture item look incredibly similar. While talking about UFOs, he mentions that seeing Gulliver on the beach in New Horizons was a nice throwback. He thought of Gulliver's previous travels, which included, you guessed it, a UFO. He continues to theorize that Gulliver tends to lie and stretch the reality of his travels, but that doesn't mean that what he says is necessarily untrue either. In the Animal Crossing movie, he lies about where he comes from, but the part where he hit something in the sky was true. What he ended up hitting was some type of spacecraft. Swanky Boggs makes a great point that maybe Gulliver is getting abducted by aliens due to him waking up and not remembering where he's even at in New Horizons. One key detail is Gulliver mentioning that hallucinations sneak up on him. Gulliver wakes up in a random place without knowing what happened and claiming to have hallucinations. Sounds a lot like an alien abduction. Gulliver's also been shown to say things like, no, don't make me go back to space. It's cold and dark and huh? I'm not in space. Swanky Box theorizes that Gulliver has been getting abducted by aliens his entire life, to the point that his amnesia just makes him believe that Gulliver is an alien. Swanky Box's main theory is that the alien TV message isn't meant for everyone. It's only meant for people who know when to listen to it and find the message. He implies that because there's no one besides their character who's freaking out over the alien message, it's safe to assume that no one else hears it, but that would mean that there are people who are intentionally hearing the message, in which the theory would mean that the aliens are already integrated into the Animal Crossing society. He includes that human stuff, anatomy, painting, spacesuits, sculptures, etc. are aligned into real life humans, but not Animal Crossing humans. He plays into shape shifting a bit, it mentions that Blanca can shapeshift into other villagers, which line up with the aliens in the Animal Crossing movie, but ultimately asks the viewer what their perspective is. So I'll ask you, what do you think about this theory? I'll also leave a link to this video as well, as I did find it incredibly captivating. End of Layer 5 Layer 6 The Raccoon Games so I don't really have any information I thought was worth posting on here. So I will raise the question to you guys. If you know what the raccoon games are, what they reference, um, I couldn't really find that much information on them. It sounds familiar, but I don't want to just make my own head cannon and sound ridiculous on a video like this that's supposed to be informative. So I will leave this to the pros and uh, have someone else uh, answer this as I'm not really sure. The Whale Shadow. The Whale Shadow is an easter egg in the GameCube titles while traveling to the island on Captain's boat. When traveling to Animal Island, you'll see a, the regular fish shadow, but instead it has massive proportions. The whale cannot actually be caught and is rarely seen. In Animal Forest E+, in the US version of Animal Crossing, there is between a 1-4% to chance of seeing it on any given trip depending on the month, the greatest chance of encountering it being between January and February. In Animal Forest E+, the chances are never greater than 1% due to the increased number of ocean fish. If the player uses external devices or glitches to walk on the water, they can encounter the whale and attempt to catch it to no avail. This is because fish do not bite in the open ocean. However, if someone can spawn it in the river, they will be able to catch it. Catching it results in Arapaima, a glitch message using dialogue from Apple Sisters. The Arapaima acts as normal. 
Tom Nook Printer is a Xerox work center, 7225. If you've ever worked in an office, there's a high chance that your printer is also a Xerox work center, 7225. In the Animal Crossing New Horizons Town Hall, on Tom Nook's side of the hall, you can see the iconic printer. Here's a picture of the printer in real life. Nice. GameCube Frozen Timeline. I thought this was going to be something a little more creepy or odd, but it's still pretty neat. The GameCube Frozen Timeline refers to the limitations of the GameCube version of Animal Crossing. Sure, we can jump back and jump forward the clock on the GameCube's internal clock to 2099. The game itself limits by starting on January 2001 and ending on December 31st, 2030. Saving your game on January 1st, 2031 during the New Year's event will result in the dates being set back to January 1st, 2030 once you reboot the file. So the game's timeline is frozen into 2001 to 2030. If you're ever going to play this game in a real life day after this date, you kind of don't have a choice now. Test Maps Test Maps refers to a video on YouTube by the user Sly Cooper Reloaded Coded, who goes through all the maps that provided the developers to test certain features or sequences in the game. There are a total of 50 test maps shown in the video. Some of these, for example, test the delivering of a letter when the post office inventory is full. Another is showing the different slopes that each town gets through RNG. The igloo and camping site, which has a different villager in it. A small town with paintings and gyroids. Beta Map 7 is pretty neat. The creator of the video mentions that it might be used for town announcements, but it makes your player care character of invisible if they're by the train station when making the announcement. It's a cool video to check out. I'll leave a link in the description for this as well. The Forbidden Four the Forbidden Four is a colloquial name given to a group of NES items that cannot be obtained through the use of secret codes. The four items are Mario Brothers, Super Mario Brothers, Ice Climber, and The Legend of Zelda. The moniker started out as the Forbidden Five, with the fifth item being Punch Out, and referred to the five NES games that at the time could only be acquired through the use of a cheating device. The accidental generation of a Punch Out code by GameFAQs user Dark Lau on August 12, 2003, provided access to the NES title until the game's code generator was cracked completely by Ryan Holtz in December that year. Mario Star makes you flash. This is one of the most literal parts of this iceberg, but sounds funnier out of context. There are Super Mario Bros. themes across the Animal Crossing series, one of them being the Starman. And when you interact with the item, the Starman music starts playing and your character flashes like a rainbow, just like the Starman. IQ Game the IQ Player is a Chinese video game console made by IQ. IQ Player games differ slightly from their N64 counterpart, with the text and voices having been translated to Chinese. The only exceptions are the Mario games and the previous Japan-only title, Sin and Punishment, where the text has been translated while voices remain in English. Additionally, many glitches and errors from the original games have been fixed. Speedruns of several games such as The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time and Star Fox 64 are sometimes carried out on the IQ Player due to quicker loading times and faster scrolling text than the N64 versions. While I feel that many people know about this console and its version of Super Mario 64, I personally never knew that there was an IQ version of Animal Crossing. Tom Nook runs a child labor cult. I actually remember reading this years ago. As a preteen obsessed with Animal Crossing, I would soak up any content I could find. This specific iceberg entry is based on an LP archive post. It plays out a bit like a creepypasta. The archive shows the protagonist going through the game as we normally would, but the story frames it like he's being trapped and held there against his will. The protagonist of the LP changes the context of the real game's interactions, such as Tom Nook not accepting that the player does not want to upgrade their house and adding debt to the player character yet again. There's a bit of swearing and antagonizing everything that Tom Nook does. This the story is actually captivating for what it is, and a bit campy. The creator used a cool way of using letters to make the game have dialogue, quote unquote, it wouldn't have with Tom Nook. I enjoy the original artwork because it's such a fun idea. The story gets off the rails, but like I said, there's a campy tone to the entire thing, and I would say it's definitely worth a quick read. The story also features one of my favorite villagers as one of the main characters, Penny. End of Layer 6 The Final Layer Layer 7 Animal Crossing is Communist Propaganda as long as I've talked to others and reading others' thoughts on Animal Crossing, even at a younger age, I've always heard the community at some point call 
Animal Crossing Communist. Polygon article covers the core ideas as to why it seems that way. The article goes into how turnips run the labor theory of value. I'll quote it here. There's just one problem. What are these particular turnips being used for in the world of Animal Crossing? The value doesn't come from their nutritional value because Daisy May tells you pretty explicitly from the start that these turnips you're buying from her aren't for eating, they're for selling. Their function as a thing is synonymous with, as the game suggests, stocks, hence the stock market pun. You're buying and selling the idea of the value of these turnips, not so much the physical food items themselves. I personally think the article gets a bit in and over its own head, so I'll link it and leave it at that. There's not much to add beyond that. Animal Crossing is the afterlife. It's a trope at this point for an internet theory to be X is dead or the afterlife, but this theory is a lot like the communism entry because people have always thought that Animal Crossing is based on the afterlife for a long time. One of the older posts online is from seven years ago from a Tumblr account that says, Today, I had a theory about Animal Crossing and I thought I'd share with the community. It came to me when I got a letter from my mom. My theory is that the player character in Animal Crossing is deceased and the gifts from the mother are objects placed on his or her grave. The mom writes letters to help cope with the loss of her beloved child. This is also why the father hardly writes. He handles his grief in a different way. It came to me when the letter my mom sent in game said that she thought she heard my voice in the wind and it spooked her a little. The mom sends letters with topics that sound like distant memories. Every once in a while when you receive letters from your mom in the mail, they often say things like I thought of you and how we used to walk in tall grass or I hope you're doing well. And sometimes even an object connected with that memory is included. Catchless Fish Catchless Fish is about Animal Island from the GameCube version of Animal Crossing. When traveling on the boat with Cap'n, you'll notice fish shadows swimming in the ocean. Earlier in this video, I mentioned that the island is accessible via action replay codes. If you were to use hacks so you can walk on the water and equip a fishing rod, you'll learn that the fish shadow is but a texture with nothing at all coded to it. Strange Cubes Strange cubes is something I actually noticed when researching test maps. The strange cubes are, well, strange cubes. They're a glitched item in Animal Crossing for the GameCube. They're orangish brown circles that push the player around. I'm sure they were used when villagers and animals would collide with each other to make sure that they would get pushed as opposed to freak out or do something weird. Titanic this one is just a weird anomaly to me. There's a random wiki called animal-crossing-fan.fandom.com. There's a wiki entry on the site called Titanic, and it reads as such. The Titanic, Titaniku, is a catchable item in New Horizons. It can only be caught on the pier and is the largest thing that can be caught in the game, meaning it will always win the fishing tourney if submitted as an entry. Upon donation or selecting Tell Me About This, Blathers will say, Hoody too, I see you have caught the Titanic, the rarest thing to catch. People have been searching for this for years, but it seems that it has finally been found. The Titanic was said to be indestructible, but at what? The faithful night it set sail, it hit an iceberg and crashed, down it went into the abyss. Thank you again for this wonderful donation. The wiki goes on to say the Titanic will be displayed in the abyss tank, with the oarfish, spider crab, colacanth, bear life, football fish, and the giant isopod. However, this is not true. I, I don't I don't know how or why this exists, but it, it exists. And the rarity on the item on the wiki says one of a kind with like seven stars. I, I think I need more context. This, this is weird, but it was pretty funny. Deathwing. Deathwing is a lot like the Brutus part of this video. I just feel that the Deathwing is a little more obscure than Brutus. Deathwing is a rumor in the GameCube version of Animal Crossing. It plays out similarly to Brutus. It's an evil fish that you can catch with red eyes and red fangs. If you catch it, it will reset your entire save file. When looking this up, I found a forum post from supercheats.com debunking the rumor, saying, Deathwing the fish, rumor nine, false. There's an evil fish swimming around. It is black with red eyes and evil fangs. If you get it, it will instantly reset your game. Or so you may think, what benefit would this have? If it were a glitch, it wouldn't have a name. It'd be, and then he puts a random thing of text in front of it, like spam or something like that. It scared the little kids that this was intended for anyway. Who thought of this mess? A vampire fish that resets the game? Please don't be ridiculous. But yeah, much like the Brutus thing, I can see why it's ridiculous. It just reminds me of playground rumors, which are always fun. Gyroid Boxing Match this is another old school Animal Crossing for GameCube rumor I remember reading on the Animal Crossing community forum. There was a rumor saying that if you set up the full boxing furniture, toss two gyroids in the ring, they will start fighting in a punch out type of way. Unfortunately, it's not true, because you can't stack the gyroids or anything else on top of the ringside corners to make the ring. But I always thought this was funny and wish it was real. Pikachu Pet 
Pikachu pet refers to a unique item found in Animal Crossing for the GameCube. As many of these past few entries have been rumors, this one is actually true. In the GameCube version of Animal Crossing or Animal Forest E+, you can do favors for the villagers and they have you either deliver or pick up a unique item that are specifically for delivery. So it's not furniture you can display or anything. Some of these items include a camera, a comic book, a handkerchief, a picture book, even a Game Boy. One of the items you can receive for a villager is a Pokemon Pikachu, which is like a Game Boy, based on something that's incredibly specific in real life. The Pokemon Pikachu is a relatively obscure product that was made to be Pokemon's own version of a Tamagotchi. The item in Animal Crossing's appearance is based on the Pokemon Pikachu 2 Gold Silver. The Pokemon Pikachu in real life actually served as the inspiration for the Pokewalker, which came bundled with Heart Gold and Soul Silver for the Nintendo DS. Kappen and Leilani have an open relationship. Oh boy, here we go. This is the last one. I love how absurd the name of this entry is. The defining trait of Kappen is that he has a fondness for women. It usually says that in guides or other types of resources on Kappen. In City Folk, Captain sometimes will ask the player, if female, if they will sail away to an island with him. In New Leaf, he and his family live on the Paradise Island. This may be implying that he followed his dream along with his family, but in New Leaf, he will still make advances to a female player character with things such as, me dear ocean treasure, you make the sea flower bloom in my heart. Yari, you look a bit burly, can you wrestle me? I've had all I could take of this, are you ever gonna stop crying? You look a touch queasy, do I scare you, me dear lass? I love the wee youngsters, they're so gullible. Yar there, miss you'll be gorgeous one day. Yar, I got an eye for beauty. Tell me something, girly. Do you know how to make a four-star chili? And I guess from there, fans kind of put it together that despite having a wife and kids, he wants you to join him on their island. But I couldn't find anything about Leilani being okay with this. And that's it. That was a long process. Some of these rumor-based entries remind me of old formative memories I've had growing up. I've had a lot of fun putting this video together and it's been nice to lose myself when researching this video and kind of just go down a rabbit hole. I'd like to thank the community behind Animal Crossing first and foremost for having such a cool group of theories and other things that are in this iceberg. Big, big thank you to the websites animalcrossing.fandom.com and Nookipedia and wikis alike for helping me make this video a million times easier to make and put together. If you've made it this far into the video, thank you so much for sticking around and watching it i'd love to hear your thoughts on your favorite entry in the iceberg or something you remember that didn't seem to make it onto this iceberg please also like the video subscribe for more content check out my animal crossing playlist i make discussion videos on games as well i'd like to make another iceberg video so if there's something you'd like to see please let me know thanks for watching this video this has been nate and i hope you have a great day